Hey guys, how you doing? It's Slink here, uh, back with another tutorial and today I'm going to show you how I like to make some neuro sounds. So we're going to start with operator and just choose a sine wave for the first os oscillator. And depending on your taste, you can go for a saw or a square wave on the other oscillator. Um, but honestly, it doesn't change the sound that much. Um, so this is what we have so far. We want to go for that low D because pitchers love the D. Obviously. <laughs> okay, so we'll just make a MIDI clip and put a D in it. And that's what we have so far. So, the idea here, uh, bleh, let me try that again. The idea here is that we're going to um, distort the sound and then filter it and then distort it again. And the effect that that creates is, is really interesting. And, and that's kind of how the neuro sound is, is created. So, let's start with a limiter because things can get pretty crazy when we start distorting things and we don't want to blow our speakers. Um, and then we're going to go with a saturator and we'll try wave shaper. Let's crank it up. Yeah, that sounds pretty beefy. And let's try an amp after that. Let's go to the bass section. Yeah, I'll we'll crank the bass up. Let's try and get it nice and crispy in the top end. Because I, I think I want to make like a neuro bass sound that has like lots of crispy highs. Um, and then we'll go for a filter. And this is where things get interesting. Sounds pretty neat. Um, we can also turn the spread up on the operator. But it's easy to overdo it on the spread. We can use a chorus or something as well. And actually, another trick is to use a, revi uh, a reverb um, and just turn the de decay time down quite a bit. I'm just open it all the way up and then we'll just put it in a touch of that. Maybe a little bit more. Let's try it after the filter, actually. So this is kind of like experimental kind of based. You gotta really just mess around until you you know massage the sound in to the way you like it. Um, and usually it's by building up small amounts of distortion over time um, over several different plugins. So let's try an overdrive now. That's getting a real like raspy sound. That sounds cool. Uh, what we might do actually is just record some filter movements. I'm just going to wiggle my mouse all over the place. <clears throat> and uh, then we can kind of hear the effect as we're messing with the other settings. So let me just hit record. There we go. Uh, I might turn the spread down a bit. Uh-oh. <laughs> I broke Ableton, guys. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, let me just turn my speakers up so I can hear what I'm doing. Yeah, that's starting to sound really cool. Let's put a saturator after this reverb. I'll turn the reverb down a little bit. And maybe we'll go for a... What's that called? Sign a fold. <laughs> Oh, that's sounding pretty beasty. The other thing you can do is um, sort of play off of this bandpass with a notch as well. 
It's a bit more subtle um, and you really got to get the timing right um, for a notch filter to play off the uh, the band pass. Um, so we're not going to do it for the tutorial, but feel free to mess around with that. It's just another idea. Let's try throw a chorus in. Where's my chorus? Yeah, that sounds pretty sweet. Um, okay, so the next step to this is to just record it. So we'll grab another channel and set it to resampling. Okay, and we can mute this channel now. And this is where things start to sound really cool uh, when we throw on some multiband compression. So you can see a lot of volume um, changes here. And what we really want is a big fat sausage. So let's throw an OTT down and a glue compressor after that. <laughs> Uh, it's actually distorting just a touch. I'm going to rewind. Yeah, there's a couple of high resonant filter movements there that I just want to try and clean up before we continue. Yeah, see how that goes a bit high? Let's just bring that down a bit. So this is the um, resonance automation lane. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to grab everything and just turn the resonance down a bit. Maybe even a bit further than that. That's quite intense right here. All right. Let's record that down. And like I said, I'm not sure if I said this already, but you can spend all day tweaking and messing with this. And it's fun as fuck. So definitely give it a go. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's mute that. And now we can hear what this sounds like with the OTT. <laughs> Uh, there's a couple of peaks in here that sort of sound a bit funny. Um, so, hey, let's just cut them off. I like this section. I like this section a lot here. So let's just uh, freeze that and flatten it. And you can see we've got a big sausage now, which is perfect. That's what we were aiming for. And we'll create a new um, MIDI channel and not an operator. We want a simple... Let's just try a sampler actually. Keep it simple. Keep it sample. <laughs> okay. So this is where the... Oh, I grabbed the simpler, didn't I? No, I grabbed the simple. Oh, I forget what I did. <laughs> Anyways, let me get my keyboard out. <clears throat> Okay, now we can turn the volume up on that. So remember we recorded a D note, so we should go into the zone and change 
Oh, well, we don't need to go into the zone, but we, we should change the root key to D. So now when I press a D, we hear that same note that we've been listening to all day here. And let's turn the voices to one. And we'll, where's the, yeah, let's turn the glide on. We'll just set it to like 70-ish. Oh, I didn't turn it to glide. There we go. And over here on the pitch range, we can set that to 12 so we can go. So I'm just playing the whole sample right now, but what you can actually do is just choose the part that you like. And we want to add a little bit of a attack there. So we don't get the... Um, click and we can set up a loop actually which can sound really cool and this will get that Reesey sort of sound but there's loads of sounds just to mess with in here all right starting to sound pretty cool um, I got a drum and bass beat here And there you go. It's pretty easy. Um, and there's lots of things you can experiment in there with. And uh, every time I do this, I get a totally different sound. Um, and it's really, really fun. Let me show you some of the other ones that I made. Uh, this one's kind of cool. Neuro bass number five. <laughs> I got a very strict naming scheme here. That's what this one sounds like. It's just the same idea, just a sample in there. And I've added some controls over here on the macro knobs. Just an additional filter. And I can change the glide time. And there's a pitch decay on the on the beginning, which we can turn off here. Pretty fun that one. Um, this one, number three, is really wonky and, and weird. I don't know how I did it, honestly, but apparently I used trash. Um, just press random keys on the keyboard and you get this really weird sound. And that's just through experimentation and a few happy accidents. You can see I, I left it pretty unsausaged. Um, so there's a few different styles you can you can use when making something like this. And I think in the actual original MIDI information, I had um, lots of pitch bends and different notes. And uh, yeah, so that's how that one goes. Um, this is this was my first attempt here, and. I also use trash. This is just a, a distortion thing. So really you can use any kind of distortion. What your favorite distortion plugin. Pretty evil sounding right there. And what have we got here? I think with this one, what I did is use some of the LFOs. Yeah, so I have LFOs messing with the um, with the pitch 
of the sample and then another LFO messing with the timing of that LFO and another LFO messing with the timing of that LFO which is messing with the timing of that. So it kind of speeds up and slows down like in pitch uh, and um, it's all very random. That's why you can hear it kind of wiggling around. So anyways, hopefully you guys learned something out of this video. It's pretty easy to make neuro-based sounds. You just got to put in the time and, and uh, be willing to experiment. And honestly, I seriously recommend it because it's really, really fun to just mess around and make some crazy sounds without having to worry about where is that going to fit into my song, you know? Just go nuts with it, make a few, save them, and then maybe you'll use them one day. Maybe you won't, who knows? But either way, have fun and uh, catch you next time. Peace.